just like God, Satan can only operate in this realm when he gets in somebody. Point in case. You remember the man they couldn't do nothing with that that was in the, in the he was in, in, in the graveyard. They couldn't do nothing with him. And watch this. They had a discernment. They knew who Jesus was. And guess what? You need to know who the devil is because the devil know who you are. They knew who Jesus was. And they said, why are you coming to torment us before our time? Now watch this. We're talking about as much as 4,000 to 6,000 demons in one man. How come, they just, how come they just didn't have the body of their own? Why didn't they go somewhere else if they had their own body? If he wasn't, they wasn't in him, he wouldn't have been acted up. They have to be in somebody or in something. And quit letting people tell you, or uh, people that tell you uh, the devil got in the car, he, you know, the, got in electricity. The de people say all kind of stuff. The, the, the devil don't operate in things. He has to operate through somebody. And so when we're talking about in spiritual warfare, even though we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, there are some people who the demons are in. And so when we're dealing with them, we've got to know it's not them themselves, but the spirit that may be within them. But now you've got to know this too. Demons cannot be in a saved person. Show you why. When I was talking about Jesus said that they come back and find that place clean and garnished. Now, if that individual will save, how in the world would God let the one devil and seven more demons come back and throw him out of somebody when he's God Almighty. I want you to hear this. When him, here's a man that had legions of demons in him, he cast them out. And so when we read scripture, we got to understand we cannot interject thoughts or take what people say at face value. We have to read scripture because when you have the Holy Spirit in you, he's inside of you. You can't have a demon in you. I'm going to show you something else that we say. We're talking about spiritual warfare. A lot of times, yeah, we got some enemies. One of them is death. The other one is Satan. And sometimes it's self. Sometimes we even blame things on the devil. That's not him. Some of our spiritual warfare is our self-spirit. But now, when, we, when, we, when, we're dealing with, when we're dealing with spirits and stuff like this, now some people say, I used to say that when I didn't know no better. I used, and y'all, I want y'all to, after the night, I hope that y'all don't be saying this. But you know, some people say, the devil told me to do such, such a thing. You know, how, how many of you been guilty of saying the devil talked to me? Go ahead, Ray, don't be scared, but I'm going to help you tonight. You know, some of us say the devil told me to do this and the devil told me to do it. I'm saying, have you really ever heard the devil's voice? Really? Now, because I want to show you something. When Satan was tempting Jesus, he wasn't in Jesus. He was literally there. Are you listening? And so when we're talking about the devil talking to me, we need to really search our own minds and see if it's just us. Because now if you say, and the Holy Spirit have come to live in you, you don't have any business with but two spirits in there. Yours and the Holy Spirit. Now if the devil talking to you, then you need to, you need to search yourself and, and, and discover that maybe you're just really not saved. Because the Holy Spirit and the devil's spirit can't be in the same place at the same time. And so a lot of times, you know, the devil came to me and told me. Now, the only time I ever heard, I, I, you might hear some voices in a dream. Because, you know, it, it, the, we, the real us is on the inside. And I know many of us, you know, we went to sleep and we've heard songs and, and we hear people talking in our dreams. But they're not literally there. But here's what we have to understand is we cannot allow the devil uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, to get the glory uh, uh, for, for using us when it's really us ourselves operating in the flesh. A man told a story one time. I heard when I was little, he said that... Uh, uh, he, uh, there was a man that gave a little story, said he went to church and there was a demon sitting on, on, on the porch and he had his hand in his head, shaking his head. And the man said, devil, what's the matter? He said, the people in there testifying, everything they do, they blame it on me. That's what people do. And, and Flip Wilson didn't help it because he, he said, the devil, he started that the devil made me do it. Ain't yeah. that what they say? Now, but if you go back to the Garden of Eden, Eve tried to pull that same trick with God. She said, the devil made me do that. Uh, God didn't fall for that. The devil didn't have that kind of power. He was not in her. He, he, he talked to her, and guess what? He was there, but he was in a serpent. 
He wasn't just there in the spirit. He was inside of something. So I want you to get to understand that, that the enemy has to, for him to have a voice, he has to be in something that has vocal cords or something that can make a sound. So he can't be in a piece of wood, a piece of steel, a piece of metal. No, that don't happen. Movies mess us up and say, oh, that's the devil in that piece of glass over there. You see it fell up? No, all that kind of stuff. No. See, the devil want to play tricks on your mind. See, he want to play tricks on your mind. But, but now, we can't blame the devil for everything, but even though he is the author of a lot of things, he is a liar, he's a deceiver, he's all of that. But we have to understand now, now watch this. It's important for you to have the Holy Spirit in you because in your spiritual warfare, if you don't have him in you, you really don't have nothing to work with. He empowers us to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So now watch. In the passage of Scripture, and I'm, I'm going to move on. I don't know how much time I have, but I want to hurry up and, and get by this because it, 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 it takes a whole lot to, to deal with a lot of things. But, but in, the, in the passage where it said Jesus was tempted of Satan for 40 days... Now, we're talking about him being bound. You remember me say you, I said you can't bind the devil? When you read the passage after Jesus had been tempted to 40 days, watch this. It says that the devil left him for a season. Can you say that? But he left him for a season. Now, it would have been good for Jesus to say, okay, I'm going to bind you up so you don't mess with me and nobody else no more. But he just said Satan left him for a season. As believers, we got to understand that we're going to have seasons, seasons in our finances and our health, with our emotions, with, our, with, our, with, with all the type of things that concern us. We're going to have seasons, and Satan works in, in a circle. He works in seasons. Sometimes you've seen, sometimes your finances is just so bad, and all of a sudden they get better because he left it alone. And he's, he's smart. He said, okay, God done, done brought you out of that, so now I'm going to start working with your health. See, then he brings you out of that, and he starts working with your children. Bring you out of that, he starts working with your relationship. Bring you out of that, he starts working with the people on your job. And so he always keeps going around a circle. Now watch this. That's why the verse says, be sober, be vigilant. Because, see, when you, he, just because God ease up or the enemy ease up in one area, then you say, well, I'm, I'm okay now, I got this now. And so he wants to catch you off guard because he wants to deal with your mind and your emotions because your mind and your emotions is the part of the real you. It's on the inside. When the enemy works with your, with your finances and your physicalness, or your relationships and external things, it's because he's trying to get at the real you. That's why God allowed him uh, to go against, uh, against Job. And he said, you can touch everything, but you can't touch his soul. In other words, you can't touch his inner being. You can't take his life. See, and, and so even when Paul was going through his adversities, which was spiritual, he said that I, I receive a messenger of Satan to buffet me. He, he worked on him. You read uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, you see how the enemy caused, caused people to rob him and to beat him. And he was in his shipwrecks. All these things happened to him. Uh, as a result of a thorn in the flesh, the enemy, a uh, thorn in the flesh, which was representing the Old Testament, they considered their enemies or uh, the other people that they fought against, the other nations, to be a thorn in the flesh, somebody that's always picking at you, uh, coming against you, and causing you opposition. So he knew that the enemy was his thorn in the flesh, given to me, debuffing me. But now watch what he says. He said, he goes to a point after he prays three times, he realizes spiritual warfare. Even though, even though it was men beating him and robbing him. He didn't say that it was the men. He said, it's a messenger of Satan to buffet me. And when he gets down and he said, after he realized that he prays three times and God does not lift that, uh, that move that thorn from him, he said uh, that God told him, my grace is sufficient. And so he said, I'll gladly suffer my persecutions and my infirmities that the power of God, let somebody say the power of God might rest upon me in your spiritual warfare you need to have the power of god when he's talking about rest that means staying there see to rest means to sit there to stay there to dwell the bible has given us the holy spirit he said i'll be with you always i'll come and make my abode with you that simply means the same thing as rest so the holy spirit is given to us because we are in spiritual warfare and we must always understand that we got to be sober be vigilant because our adversary the devil has a roaring line what do we say walking about Seeking whom he may devour. Watch what verse 9 says. Watch he says. Whom resist? Let everybody say resist. resist. 
steadfast. In other words, continuously, you got to resist him. Not, not every day has its own evil. Jesus says in the book of Matthew chapter 6, he tell, when he tells us, he says, don't take no thought for tomorrow. Every day will take care of itself and take thought for itself sufficient to the, to the evil thereof. Every day has its own evil. Every day of your life, you're going to be very faced with some type of adversity. May not be the same type, may not be on the same level, but every day, excuse me, has its own evil. But he said you got to resist them, not bind them. Let everybody say that, resist. Then you got to do it continually, steadfast. What? Resist him in faith, doing what? Knowing that the same affliction. You see that in verse 9? He said that the same afflictions. Can you say that the same? Same afflictions are accomplished, or in other words, happening in your brethren that are in the world. You got to know that as believers, you're not the only one that's dealing with spiritual warfare. Everybody who is saved is dealing with spiritual warfare. Why? Because the Bible says they that live godly must suffer persecution. It may look like it's coming from man or from people, but ultimately, ultimately it's behind the devil. He uses people. That's what we're talking about, standing against the wiles of the devil. He uses people. He uses things. He uses circumstance because he always come up with something. When we're talking about wiles, that means his mind is creative. He's going to figure out some stuff. If he can't get you one way, he said, that's not working. Let me come up with something else. You know, say, people say, where did they get all these, these wild ideas? That's the way the devil is. He got wild ideas. He come up with stuff that you probably wouldn't even imagine would happen to you. He, and he hasn't stopped inventing stuff because people are steady being born. Satan is using, coming up with new tactics, even though they may seem they may be to have the same connotation, but he's coming up with new stuff because as everything progressed, transportation has progressed, electricity, what they can do with it. Electricity has always been electricity, but they figured out other things to do with it. Everything progresses. And so as things progress, as men become smarter, the enemy comes up and it devises more things to deal with the minds of men because he understands that he can only do so much to the body, but because we've been anchored in God, he can't take our soul. He can't take our life. Just like with Job, he can't do nothing to us to take us out until God gets ready. Watch this. The Bible says that we are counted as sheep as a slaughter all the day long. Then another passage of scripture says that we are troubled but not distressed, perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not be, not destroyed. That's in, 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 in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. But when you get down off in there, maybe about the 16th or 17th verse, it says something like this. Those are outward man prayers. The inward man is renewed day by day because the inward man is the real you. If you get both your arms cut off, both your legs cut off, you know, they, you go in the hospital and you see people, they, they, they can only, they, they're only alive from, from the head of it. The rest of them is dormant, can't do anything. But within them, the real you is spirit. And so within them, in their minds, that's why the Bible talks about putting on uh, the, 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 uh, the helmet of salvation. And you've got to guard your mind because guess what? Everything, all of the rest of, all of, the, rest of the, 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 the armor that take place, it has to be put in action through your mind. See, that's why like God, Christ is the head of the church. The head gives orders and instruction the rest of it. You may have on the breastplate of salvation, but when you think about you have think about salvation, you got to think about it with your mind. When, when you're talking about the gospel of peace, you don't know what that is unless that registers in your mind. The, 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 the belt of truth, it has to come into your mind what is true. And so, see, the real you is, is spiritual. And let me say this in my closing. Since it's spiritual warfare, we have to have our, it daily, have our minds transformed. Scripture says that our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds, casting down the what? Imagination. Where does imagination take place? In your mind. The enemy wants to fool you and play with your mind because he knows that's the best place to defeat you in your spirituality. If he can work on your mind, matter of fact, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, down in there about... Uh, verse 7 it says that he will keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus because your heart and your mind is not physical but it's spiritual your emotions are within your spirit see your, your, your thinking is in your spirit so he has to work out on with something on the outside 
to try to get you to give in because when you stop thinking or using your mind, the enemy can defeat you. He'll cause you to forget about all of your resources that you have in the word of God, the resources that you have in the power of God. And in my closing, the Bible says this. He said, thou will keep them in perfect peace whose what? Mind is stayed on him. So what you want to do is you want to keep your mind clear. Stay in the word. Stay focused in the word so God can talk to you and bring back to your remembrance. He told his disciples. He said when the Holy Spirit come, it will bring back to your remembrance all the things whatsoever I've said to you. And that's how you operate. And that's why you, the Bible said grace and peace be multiplied. In the midst of your warfare, grace and peace need to be multiplied through your knowledge. Your knowledge, not anything but it's your knowledge that takes place in the mind. The mind is a serious thing. You know, the doctors talk called the brain the mind. Well, don't y'all pay no attention to that. David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart. He wasn't talking about, he was talking about his mind. They're interchangeable. When a man dies, you know, when they talk, we hear about the rich man and Lazarus died, they were dead. How do you think they knew where they were? With their mind. The mind never dies. It's spiritual. And, and I guarantee you, if, if, whoever's dead, wherever they are, they have a knowledge of where they are. But if they've been dead for 100 years, if you go look in that casket, you ain't going to see no brain in there. But guess what? They still know because the mind is spiritual. So our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. So when you got to, you got to let your mind be linked up with the mind of God. That's what he gave. He, he given us his mind when he gives us the Holy Spirit. All right, let's give the Lord a hand for his word tonight.